How's it going? This is Colrolf and welcome to the tips and tricks video on Paraspora. These are a few tips and tricks that I'd come up with after playing the game for a little while that I wish I knew before I started playing. The first one is on the resource bar at the bottom, you can hover over and it'll tell you the total reserves that you have for each resource. You can see that we're a little low on silicon right now. But did you know if you click on these, it'll give you bar graphs in terms of total production and stock and there's an allocation bar where you can set what percent you want to go for each of these facilities or special projects, construction upgrades, things like that. I find that really, really helpful for chemicals. So I end up pushing up food manufacturing. You can set it to whatever you want based on what you're going, but I always like to have food manufacturing prioritized and the same thing for water. Make sure that that's a big priority because without food, research doesn't get done. One of the first power generating upgrades you get beyond the initial solar farms is wind farms. And you may think, oh wow, that's great. They'll do about 50 megawatts of power. Well, not quite. They're a little bit of a trap. <laughs> Whereas solar farms have a really high efficiency and aside from the odd dust storm, really maintain that high efficiency. Wind farms really go up and down. They can bottom out to nothing and then pop back up. I'd be cautious relying on wind farms a whole lot because you'll find that, you know, yeah, that 50 megawatts of power suddenly evaporated to nothing for a little while and your base is screaming because it's run out of power. It'll be back, sure, but until then, it's kind of a mess. Another thing I've discovered, which, uh, I'm not sure how to interpret this, I guess, but colonists don't need food to live. They need food for research. They will stop creating research if they run out of food, but they won't die off, it seems. Or at least I haven't seen them die off in that way. They will want to leave. So if you do have ships uh, going back and forth to Earth, they may pack up and leave if you're not feeding them. But if you don't, they can't leave the colony and they'll just stay until you can feed them and then they'll do more research. I'm not recommending that, um, it's just kind of more of an interesting observation that don't worry if you have a sudden food shortage, you can recover and they'll, they won't all die off on you or something horrible. When you reach a point in the campaign when you're getting additional landing sites, a few things to keep in mind. One is that you'll automatically spawn resources around it, kind of one of everything you need at least, which is nice. The other thing is that you're a little limited on resources. Basically, you need to go through the same progression that you did at the start. If you have other tiers of mines and factories, you'll want to make sure to set them to level one. Otherwise, you'll find that you run out of resources. If that happens, like you made a mistake in your build order, that's okay. If you're on normal or easy difficulty, you can always scrap the building, get the resources back, and go back and build the right thing in the right order. Another trick is that the new site will be completely separate from your original base and there isn't an, a way of transporting goods between the two so you will need to build up all the factories and all the things that you'll need at the new site in order to build all the fun stuff over there. Eventually you can get to the point where you're making roads or hyperloops in between but for now you'll probably be completely isolated. The next tip that I have is to build lots of aerological scanners and keep them running. It can be a little difficult to find resources and if you need to scan for them and you run out of something, it <laughs> you could be in, a bad, in for a bad time. Best to have them running and just left running, even though they do run a little slower as they get further and further away from the scanner location. As you spread out, it's a good idea to drop a scanner every once in a while. You never know when you're going to need that next iron mine. When one of your resources is depleted, the game will play a sound. You heard it right there. That's your sign that you need to have a look around and see which one of your mines has run out. There isn't any other notification that your mine has run out of resources. You just have to look for that black icon after you see that sound and you'll know that you'll need to decommission that mine. Hopefully at some point in the future there will be a quality of life icon or notification to say hey this one's done, but for now that's all we've got. When you get to the point of researching upgrades for your mines and factories, it can be a little difficult to figure out which factories you've upgraded or which mines are not upgraded and whatnot. 
And actually, there is a visual way of telling that you don't actually have to go all the way in and say, okay, this is a carbon mine too. The icon changes, so there's kind of one uh, triangle there for a level 1 mine. It's got a slash plus the triangle for level 2, and then two slashes and an arrow for level 3. And for factories, it's kind of similar. Level 1 factory will have just one smokestack. Level 2 will have two smokestacks, and a level 3 will have three smokestacks. And interestingly enough, this actually corresponds with the research. You can see the level 2, level 3 mines, and level 2 and level 3 factory upgrades. I hope you found this tips and tricks guide helpful. If you have any other tips, feel free to leave them down in the comments. All the best in your adventures in terraforming Mars, and we'll catch you in the next one. Take care.